Hello everybody, I'm Tego Selchu and welcome to a Men of War Assault Squad video. This is a front lines match between me and Engineer Den. Looks like I'm playing as the Germans and I can't remember what Engineer is playing as. And so, you know, probably the drill for front lines. I'm defending, he's attacking, and then after the round is over we swap and the goal is to have more points than your opponent at the end of the two uh, matches. 25 minute time limit and uh, I'm buying a lot of regular infantry because I like to have uh, the regular infantry, they come with a machine gunner, and it's really important to have machine gunners set up, and they also come with riflemen, so it's good to have oh, riflemen in the trenches, just warm bodies in the trenches I find are important, and they have a couple submachine guns. Um, at least the squad leader's got a submachine gun, and I think one other guy comes with a submachine gun, and those are nice to keep uh, just anywhere in the trench. Uh, if someone runs into the trench, then you can murder them with a submachine gun, but uh, I typically don't bother having them duck down, um, because I think it's nice to have a rapid fire gun other than the machine gun poking out from the trench. Obviously the submachine gun is not as accurate, but I just think the more bullets you get on people as they're rushing towards the trench, the more of a chance yeah, you have to take them out before they yeah, get to the trench, and that's the, that's the most important thing, keeping people out of the trench. You don't want to have to do trench-to-trench -trench fighting when they get in there, because chances are they'll wipe out some of your riflemen. So that's usually how I think about infantry when it comes to that. You also saw me bought a couple of AT guns, pack 40s, to try and take out any vehicles they got. And then the third thing I think is always essential for front lines is the mines. Uh, at the very least, they're going to slow your opponent down. Uh, they'll have to mine sweep or something. And uh, even better, they can get you some kills or something. So um, I'm a huge fan of both AT mines and anti-personnel mines. And I almost always buy them on uh, front lines. And I usually see other people do them too. Because that's what your setup time is for. you got time to set up, preparation time, may, might as well lay some mines. I wish it was slightly easier to sort of micro the mine layers around, like I have to select all of them individually, which can be kind of tough because sometimes you accidentally select the whole squad and like send them all to different places and yeah, tell them all to place mines. But um, So you notice I'm putting the anti-personnel mines on the points that my opponent has to cap and the anti-tank mines on the road, which I think is a pretty sensible uh, proposition. Vehicles usually yeah, can be driving down the road because it's the fastest way and the AI, since it doesn't know there's mines there, it doesn't know to avoid them. Even if your opponent thinks there are mines there, uh, there's no easy way to tell your vehicle not to use the road unless you shift click a bunch of waypoints. So uh, probably I'm going to start yeah, spreading out my infantry yeah, soon. Yeah, I have to check up them all in my mine layers, yeah, make sure they're doing their job, and uh, buy another machine gunner or two. Uh, I think spreading out infantry is very important, even in uh, trenches, because just one lucky artillery hit goes in the trench, and you're down and out. Alright, there's nothing to talk about. It's just setup time. Waiting for stuff to happen. My pop cap is full. I have 139 out of 140 CPs, as you can see on the right. Preparation time. Yawn. Okay, so um, how about... While I do that, I talk about why there have been no Men of War videos for forever. Because I wasn't I wasn't playing it very much. Surprise, but now I'm back. Um, Company Heroes 2 is kind of in a bad place right now. Natural Selection 2, they just broke it with one of the new patches. Plus, Men of War always owns. So uh, there's that. I'm thinking about setting up a tank trap. Because why not? My mine good dudes are out of mines. So I'm like, alright, uh, tank traps. Except these guys have some mines. So let's put them down. One of the things I always wonder about is whether I should hide my mine laying dudes. Because often when you attack in front lines, you'll notice that your opponent has like combat engineer, AT mine, just like hanging out in one of the trenches or something. And obviously that's a dead giveaway that they laid some mines if you see the combat engineer. So I wonder sometimes whether I should just take my combat engineers and run them way back uh, before the setup time is done. And then my opponent doesn't know if I have any mines or not. But um, I figure most people are going to assume that there's going to be mines there, so they'll be cautious anyways. And um, I'm not sure whether it's uh, worth the trouble pulling your engineers back. So you notice I got a nice kill on that uh, T-70, or maybe it was a T-60, I wasn't watching close enough. Um, I did lose some infantry, and I really wasn't worrying about them. They were just bait to uh, show where the vehicles were. And you also saw me reposition my AT gun as soon as I killed that light tank, and that turns out to have been a very good idea, because my opponent immediately started bombarding uh, with artillery, so I need to be careful of that. And again, my infantry, poor infantry, serving as bait uh, for the Pack 38. Did I say Pack 40? It's a Pack 38. Serving as bait. Um, I don't mind if they get shot up a bit by that silly little tractor. So that tractor also, speaking of sure signs that your opponent has done something, if you see one of those tractors, or for the Germans, if you're playing against the Germans, you see like an Opal truck. Um, and then I don't know what the Americans, I guess the Americans maybe get a tractor. I don't know. Well, if you see those sort of non-combatant uh, towing sorts of things. That means they probably bought artillery, so uh, get ready.
for artillery to come in. I had just assumed my opponent bought artillery, because most people do buy artillery, because people love artillery in this game. But even if I hadn't assumed that, I would have known once I saw that tractor. So that would have told me, move your AT gun as soon as you get the shot in on the T-60 or the T-70, or even sooner. So there's another T-20, which means my opponent has bought two artillery pieces, uh, which I already knew, because first he bombarded on the right where my AT gun was, and then he bombarded me in the middle where... I don't know what he was trying to hit. So this is not good for me. He's got an SU-85 coming up. It's going to be a little tough for me to penetrate uh, from this range. And he can just fire HE shells at me uh, all day. So my plan now is to move up both of my AT guns and use them in concert. Um, apparently something's in the way. One of my little dudes is in the way. So the gun can't hit. And here I'm like, well, let's reposition so that maybe I'll break line of sight so he won't know where my AT gun is. And then I'll be able to angle in on the SU-85 from two directions. So worst case scenario, I can just shoot out a tread. And then it's only going to be able to kill one of my AT guns. Or even zero of my AT guns if it doesn't face itself in time uh, before I take out a tread. So that's the plan right now. Nail the tread. Uh, then fire at it safely or even take it out. Um, nice shell from his M30 artillery hits decrease my AT gun. I can still recruit it and move it, but uh, that's annoying. Um, looks like my AT gun is not doing anything. I'm trying to aim manually, but there's something in the way. Oh, it's these stupid sandbags. A lot of artillery coming in on me. This is getting kind of ugly, but uh, uh, yeah, it is a T60. What's the difference between a T60 and a T70? Please tell me, smart people. Uh, it'll be in the comments section by the time you hear this probably unless you're one of the first people watching this video but I don't know about that. Okay, finally his fucking T60 is moving up close enough for me to hit If you're watching the kill messages in the upper left, which you typically should be watching when you play this game You'll notice he just killed one of my men with a Mosin sniper. Uh, this was a, while, a little while there another kill from Mosin sniper So the thing you want to do when you start seeing that is well I just killed the sniper firing back if you were uh, watching because he's in a bush sort of down the road but the thing you want to do when you see that sniper message pop up on the top left especially on a map like this on a short or on a long narrow map with not a lot of enemy stuff on the mini map is look at the mini map because the sniper is going to pop up as a dot on the mini map when he's firing so then you can tell where the sniper is and hunt down and destroy the sniper notice i'm micromanaging such that i pick up my machine gunner's machine gun and his helmet <laughs> when he dies and gotta grab the ammo too um so that's the thing I'm doing. Oh, by the way, they announced Assault Squad 2. I haven't had a video about that. So that's cool. It basically looks like Men of War Assault Squad, except with, like, Steam matchmaking and better graphics and stuff. It's probably going to be basically the same game, but I don't care. I'm going to buy it. This game owns. Um, so hopefully they'll let us make videos of, like, the beta or something. Hopefully I'll get enough to beta. So look at this AT gun. is just getting shredded by this T-34-85, which is unfortunate. But I can, I think, penetrate the T-34 with the Pac-38. It's not easy... Uh, from the front with that sloping armor, but I think it can punch through so um, in any case It's fucked if it doesn't penetrate so it's just gonna keep shooting and hope it uh, gets through um, And that was right at the edge of the pack 38 too. Um, I killed the other one though but I, or I killed the T60 with the pack 38 um, So now I buy a pack 40 a slightly heavier AT gun because of course I need to punch through this uh, thing and again Constantly moving constantly repositioning also using my infantry you notice I'm not pulling back my infantry, even though they're getting uh, kind of chewed up slowly but surely. They have a lot of resiliency, and it's taking them a while, but they are dying. The reason I'm doing that is because I just need to get a bead on these enemy vehicles, and because if I pull back, I just give up... Um, I just give up territory and then the opponent just pushes forward so it's you're not going to gain a lot by pulling back with infantry in front lines because they're going to die eventually like let's be serious nice hit from the pack 40 on that thing but unfortunately i'm too tempting of a target for the artillery i'm just getting bombarded he is just like blowing the shit out of me this guy's a very cautious attacker um he's attacking more like people in real life attack um, or at least how they attack when they've got artillery and that's the end for my pack 40 so that's really unfortunate i could have used that um but that's just really concentrated fire from those artillery pieces. Not much I can do uh, about that. Uh, once he saw me, he was sighted in and he was ready to go. So this guy's uh, smart about using his artillery. He saves it for when he wants uh, to kill something. If we look at the points in the upper right, I'm at a nice little 314 versus his 71. So he's actually doing fairly well versus me. But of course, that'll keep ticking up for me as time goes on. So, um,. Super cautious by my opponent, not moving in with anything except vehicles, just poking and prodding with vehicles, using artillery basically to do all the work for him. Um, not my favorite playstyle, you know, I'm a more aggressive player, I'm also terrible at the game, so potentially my opponent's doing the right thing. Um, I'm getting a side hit with this pack 38 which might not be enough. Um, no sandbags available on here, and now I'm getting going to get frontal hits on the T-34, which is unfortunate. Um, and finally, uh, my opponent's moving in with infantry, you can tell he's trying to move in on the point. He's getting picked off by my infantry though. Nice to get a damage track, so that's good. 
and this is actually kind of a bad angle for me to be shooting at the tank. Um, it's its armor is now not just sloping upwards, but also like side to side, so uh, chances are most of my shots are going to just be deflecting, even if they wouldn't have already been deflecting. But I, So I fire at the turret on the top, uh, there's weaker armor up there, and I do punch through and kill a guy, but it's just not enough, and there's still people inside. Uh, they just push the dead guy aside, and uh, they're up there. But this is a really nice place for it to be immobilized, because notice there's those weird water tank things or whatever. Uh, block Are those water tanks? I can't tell. I'm leaning in closer on my screen. I don't know. Those look like hay bales. I don't know what the fuck those are. They're covered in snow. Is making it tough. Um, whatever those are, those 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 along with the sandbags and the wall are blocking shots. So this guy gets really close and kaboom! Fuck you. T34 almost flipped it over. Flipping tanks upside down is, I think, the best thing about this series of games. I'll never forget playing the original Soldiers Heroes of World War II demo. That was the game before Men of War, before Faces of War, which we shall not speak of. The original game in this series was basically Soldiers Heroes of World War II, and that demo was so good. You were playing as, like, Germans or something, and you had a broken down... No, you were playing as... playing as allies? I don't know. You had a broken down tank or something you were trying to fix, and it was, like, 12 of your men versus, like, an entire German army. That was such a good demo. I played that a thousand times, and there's this tiger tank that shows up in the demo. And somehow I managed to attack it with AT grenades or whatever and flip the tiger tank upside down. But it kept shooting at me. I think in Assault Squad, if you flip a tank upside down, it just starts smoking and it explodes after a little while. In Soldiers of Heroes of World War II, it didn't do that. It just it was just upside down and the hull, or the, uh, the machine gun on the turret was just firing at me, but it couldn't really aim left or right. It would wiggle a tiny bit and like rock back and forth, but obviously it was upside down so it couldn't turn because all the weight of the tiger was on it. By the way, don't drive that close to trenches. You never know who's inside it. Oh, by, uh, the, I keep saying, by the way, the reason he drove so close to me probably was because I think he's got infantry on the other side of that capture zone, which is why the flag was briefly uh, lowered. So he thought since he was capturing it, I wasn't in there. But um, I was so totally in there. Uh, yeah, there's those infantry. They backed out of the capture zone once they realized I was here. Um, but yeah, so that guy thought he was safe. He wasn't. Grenade just went into this trench, so I'm fucked. Boom, two of my men dead. This, so that was a nice move for my opponent there sneaking up on me with his infantry. Oh, he's got that guy on the left who was capturing the point. Okay. Um, but yeah, I flipped that tank over in Soldiers of Hero World War II and I was like, ha! And then it was still alive and I was like, well, okay. Does this work in real life? And I think I think I mentioned this in one of my old videos and somebody said, yes, an MG42 can fire upside down or something. I don't know. That was like years ago for all those hardcore fans. Um... And if you subscribe to this channel for Company Heroes 2, then sorry, I'm posting Men of War now. But I'll also post Company Heroes 2. It's weird now. I used to just post Men of War videos, but now I post all sorts of stuff. So it's like people subscribe for different stuff. And that pack 38 is destroyed. So now things are looking dire. He's taking the uh, early two points. And basically all my shit's being blown up. I'm out of points. I can't buy anything. Um, they're not coming back fast enough. So here's the thing. Once he captures this front massive thing, um, I'll fall back. And this will give me... Um, extra, uh, uh, extra, extra points to start buying stuff, and I could just give up this front point right now and start buying stuff, and I think that would be maybe the better option, but I forgot that existed. I forgot that was a choice um, in front line, so I was just trying to hold on with what I had left. I thought I was fucked. Uh, but now he's driving around with his light vehicle, like, way behind my lines, and I'm like, god damn, is he gonna try and, like, cap, like, the back thing? Is he gonna do this, like, leapfrog thing and just, like, completely blitzkrieg me and I'm and I could be destroyed. I gotta stop this. I gotta do something. And of course I only have hero points to buy stuff. So boop, buy a thing, turn over here. This is a T70. And now it's not. Ha! Huh. Suck on that. And notice that explosion no, never mind. That explosion those explodes in the upper left are actually mines going off. At the time of the game I thought I had somehow killed a bunch of infantry too with this dude, which didn't make sense because I can't ride on the side of the T70. Now I realize those were mines. So those mines have paid for themselves, I think. I don't know, actually, but I think. Um, and I have a veteran sniper that I bought a while ago uh, with my hero points also, but he hasn't done a goddamn thing. And now he's dead from the opponent's sniper. So good job, opponent. You're a, you're a, you're a bro. So now it's time to start pulling back. Uh, my front line is being decimated. I've, I've earned enough to buy Folksturm. Um... And actually, uh, I'll have enough points because I get you get a slow payback with your guns. So I'm buying like a rifleman just to try and try to stop this point from being capped. Here's my rifleman. Boom! Execution style on that stupid idiot trying to repair his 
broken husk of a T-70 or whatever. He wasn't trying to repair it. He was just standing there looking the wrong way. Frontline's been captured. Now I get my points back and I can start buying a bunch of shit. Here's the thing. You get hero points back when the frontline gets captured. I either didn't know that or I forgot it because I should have fucking bought a lot of hero units. Now I'm back up to 10. So that's a good tip. Tycho's tips. I'm a smart person. I'm just kidding. I suck at this game. But there's a tip. Buy all your hero shit before your frontline gets destroyed or abandoned in the frontline's mode. Man, imagine all the stuff I could have bought. I could have bought a fucking tiger or whatever. Probably not a tiger. That's not early enough in the game for me to buy that. I could have bought another Stu, 42. Stu 42 is here for you. Whenever you... Did you... You couldn't have knew... I was trying to say... I was, oh, forget it. I was going to say new. That guy's name is Peter Waldschmidt, who I have selected. Waldschmidt. Waldschmidt's a good sounding German name. That name's, that guy's name is, oh, I thought it was Gunther Herman from Deus Ex, but it's Gunther Hellman. Fuck yourself, Hellman. I don't care about Hellmans here. You can go to hell, Hellman. Okay, so, um, I need to desperately set up a defensive line. He, um, I'm going as far forward as I can with my defensive line, because I want to halt my opponent as far forward as I can, because that's going to give me as much uh, stuff to fall back on as I want. Um, he's going to have to move up his artillery at some point. I think he's probably at about the edge of what he can be bombarding. I want to start uh, hitting some high explosive shells on this SU, not because I think it'll necessarily penetrate, but because it's got a pretty good chance of knocking out the uh, tread. But that one missed, so it's like, well, I should pull back because i got good enough range anyways, and he's going to shoot at me and maybe penetrate. So uh, I need to get out of here. Low profile is helping me escape, but um, I'm still worried, and uh, he's still shooting at me, so the gulls pull back and maybe get some hits in with this uh, pack. Keep pulling back. Keep pulling fuck. So... In the upper left, it doesn't even tell me what damage the engine, uh, probably because that doesn't count as knocking out the stew. Uh, but it, it's got to be the SU-85. I mean, what else could have done that from this range? I don't think anything. Uh, there's a T-34-85. Maybe he's bought another one of those hanging out, but no, it's just he's got two SU-85. So one of the, one of the other knocked out my stew. So that's unfortunate. I killed a sniper by the way with an MD-42 just now, so I feel pretty good about that, despite that not really having been me. Doing it, so I have a golden opportunity now to shoot at this thing while it's shooting at my stew, um, and I do take the track out. But that's the end of my stew, so um, that's bad. Luckily, um, now that's the end of the stew. That's that's seriously the end of the stew. Luckily, uh, since that thing's lost its tread, I can just shoot it like forever with my pack, and uh, it's fucked. So that's good. But, uh, yeah, if you look at the points in the upper right, he's up to 2,600. That's because he gets 2,000 points for capping the thing. What's really bad is that he's at 6, 2,649 and I'm at 662. So even if he had not captured that thing, he'd be pretty close to me point-wise. So that's really bad. You can tell it's been a while since I played Men of War because I'm not uh, so great. Also, I think most people are better at this game uh, than me. And now I'm moving because I think it's only a matter of time before that artillery just starts falling from the sky. And... Also, since that thing's tread is knocked out and I've done a fair bit of damage to it, um, I want to maybe also take out the other SU-85, because that is, of course, now the main uh, worry for my AT gun. And those the noises those guys made stepping on the snow really confused me in this game for a moment. I was like, what is that? What, what's going on? But then I, then I realized. So that's a, that's a peek into Tycho's mind for all you people. I uh, use another peek into Tycho's mind. I'm trying to figure out if I want to buy Rome 2 Total War. Um, at this point, I'm thinking probably not, but I'm recording this probably in the past, so maybe I'll have purchased it by the time you show up here. Prone in the trench to try and be safe from this SU-85, and that'll do it. There's no way an SU-85 is going to be able to hurt me while I'm prone in the trench, but uh, the downside is that I'm not going to be able to... Man, he just killed that tree. Not cool. The downside is that I'm never going to be able to see anybody coming, so they can just get right up there, throw grenades in the trench if your opponent's being smart, or just run into the trench and just like, it can be a deathmatch if your opponent's not being smart. Uh, I don't know how those two guys died, I think they were on the edge of uh, the trench. Okay, he's fucking up all sorts of people even though I went prone. There are things if he gets a high explosive shell to, uh, this guy's name is Jonas Zimmerman, is Jonas a German name? I guess so. Um, if there's a, something for them to sort of impact a high explosive shell on near the trench, it can sort of do some damage, but there's not a lot of stuff usually. But there I am, uh, abandoning that front trench, falling back to these front trenches. Uh, he's got 5 minutes 40 seconds, so I'm feeling pretty good about holding him off um, from the thing. This guy is just like really, really laid back. Now that I'm looking at this, it's just like 
the most laid back attack ever. I've seen there. I don't think there have been like any infantry rushes until like 10 minutes worth of bombardment and picking away at me with SU-85. So, man, in retrospect, wow, that's kind of a strange kind of attack that I never do. It's very cautious, probably smarter, but I don't like it. Doesn't get my blood fired up. I'm all about the infantry charges, the suicidal uh, rushes into the depths of hell. I'm more of a World War One guy. Yeah, no, but in World War One, I, I suppose they used artillery all the time. Here we go. Here's my opponent finally realizing, oh shit, I gotta do the infantry thing. He buys a bunch of partisans and walks in this straight line. Good. That's the kind of assault I like to see. There's that SU-85 fucked. Um, but so now I'm feeling better. Uh, I have 700 points to his 600 points. So what I need is to maintain point parity uh, in the next match and also capture the front line to get the 2,000. Uh, points. So at this point, I just don't want to lose anything expensive, which is nice because I don't have anything expensive to lose, except all oh, my fucking infantry just got destroyed. Um, I don't have anything expensive to lose. Maybe shouldn't have bought the sniper Uda Lustig, but um, the, the idea is to wipe out that mortar, maybe. Um, something like that. Um, and so at this point, I'm like, oh, I just pull back. There goes my sniper. That was a big mistake. I don't want to lose this pack 40, but um, not a lot of reason to hold on to these front points anymore. I'm not sure he's even going to capture them in time. Uh, probably, maybe. He's down to four, but um, if I pull most of my infantry back, that'll cut down on the casualties uh, from the shelling. So yeah, man, this guy wins Artillery of the Year award. Maybe not for good usage, but certainly for extensive usage. And um, so maybe you're yelling at me right now, you're having an aneurysm, like, Tycho, spend all your points! I thought you had learned to spend your points like a year ago in Men of War, but now you, you're only finally buying your hero stuff. He was a tiger. The thing is, you, you kind of want to defend with as little as possible against a guy like this because what he's doing is he's getting all his kills with artillery and tank destroyers and so if I buy a lot of stuff there's just more stuff potentially wiped out by lucky artillery and tank destroyer hits like my main objective here is to hold the front line to not let him capture stuff and if I can keep him from capturing stuff with a minimum of things because he's just gonna bombard me for 20 minutes before trying anything if I don't need a lot of stuff, if I don't need a lot of manpower to hold him off, then that's less stuff to get killed when he moves in, with his, when, well, when he shells with his artillery. So as long as he never just calls my bluff and rushes me with a ton of stuff, I'll never have to buy like all this, like this Hetzer I bought, this Veteran Tiger I bought, that Martyr, ta Martyr 3 Tank Destroyer I bought, Martyr 2 maybe. Um, so, I don't know, I think there's a benefit to not spending a lot of points in the front line because you don't want your opponent killing your stuff. Uh, it's all a point-based game and you need to be ahead in points. Um, and a lot of your points as a defender of front lines is going to come from just them ticking up normally, and also from killing your opponent's stuff. So unless you have enough to like go on the offensive, uh, which is what I was actually thinking about doing with that tiger and that headser, if you can go on the offensive in front line, like just temporarily and wipe out a lot of the attacker's stuff and get a lot of points for yourself, that's totally worth it. Um, buy all your stuff you need to do that. But if it's just, look, I'm going to park a lot of stuff all over the map and I'm going to keep them from breaking through, uh, if you can do that with half the price, with, with half price units, don't do it with full price units against a guy like this, because then the artillery is just going to pick you apart. He'll earn more points on the assault than he needed to, and then it's going to be more of a deficit for you to come back um, when it happens. So I think that's where I am right now. If you have good tips for being a defender on front lines against someone who just spams artillery like this, let me know. Maybe I could have bought light vehicles and tried to sort of maraud behind enemy lines and kill the artillery. I've done that in the past, and actually now looking back, I think I really should have tried that. The thing is, this map is so narrow that you're going to be spotted, and chances are the SU-85s are just going to hit you. I think now looking back, what I would do is get some light vehicles to maraud around the side, but also in conjunction with your anti-tank stuff, like your Pac-40 AT guns, or even just a Hetzer or a Panzer IV, or even a Tiger. And have your anti-tank set up first, firing at the SU-85, sort of how you've seen me do it in this match. But then you send your light vehicles around the side, so the SU-85 is going to have to swivel if I hit it. And uh, maybe you'll be able to come in and uh, kill the people. So this is a bad move here, sending my Hetzer forward to get killed. We've got about a minute left in the match. That's a horrible, horrible decision on my part. I really ought not to have done that, so I'm pulling my Tiger back, but whatever. It's probably going to be fine. So, um, that, my, my light vehicle strategy maybe wouldn't work so well against an opponent who's got tanks, but against someone who's really going for tank destroyer artillery as their main thing, I think maybe sending some, uh, marauding vehicles is a good idea. So you see my tiger's gun got knocked down, that's really unfortunate, which means I can't use them to go up and drive and blow up all the enemy vehicles, so I've just got to pull back and try and repair, but there's no time. Um, I do buy this AT gun right before things die because, um, two AT guns, because I figure, look, if I get a lucky kill, 
at the end the magic and any of these things that's going to be good and the martyr 3 is also for this i didn't pull the martyr 3 up when i was making that little offensive with the heads and the tiger because the martyr 3 has shitty armor and i didn't want it getting killed but uh at this point i'm just gonna hope that i get the shot and uh before he gets the shot and that it pays off um and this is bad because i missed my first shot luckily the martyr 3 reloads pretty fast uh, all things considered, and boom, incredible shot from my AT gun, takes out the main gun, so my Martyr is uh, perfectly safe to keep firing, and the Pac-40 and the Martyr double team the SU-85, that was a really good kill with like three seconds left in that match, so that worked out pretty well for me, but um, this is going to be an uphill battle, I think, uh, he earned a lot of points on the offense that time, so I'm going to have to get not a bad offense, and um, uh, capture the front line. If I don't capture the front line, I lose. Look, I've, he has 2,700 points, I have 900 points. So with without the 2,000 point boost, um, it's over for me. So um, let's see what I buy. I can't remember what I buy. This is gonna be, it's gonna be a process of discovery for you and me. We're gonna grow and learn together and um, we're gonna become, we're gonna become closer throughout the, uh, through the experience. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a touchy feeler thing. Uh, we're gonna make memories that'll last for um, for all time. So I buy I buy a thing a, a shooty 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 gun gun uh, Lefe 18 M. What does any of that mean? It's probably numbers. This guy's name is Robert Kohler. So I'm buying Folkstorm. Folkstorm I think are nice on the offense because what you want is to know where your opponent is so that you know where to bombard with the artillery and where to stay away from with your tanks and where to shoot with your tanks. All that good stuff. Um, so, folks, Sturm are good at that because your opponent has to kill them, and to kill them, they have to use the guns, and to use the guns, they have to reveal where they are. That's my clever plan. Send the shitty people forward to reveal the bullet locations. It's like in Enemy of the Gates when the guy who isn't the main yeah, character says, like, I'm a whiny idiot. I'm going to get shot. And then he gets shot, and then the main character knows where to shoot. So that's... I just spoiled half that movie for you. Trust me, I did you a huge favor. That movie's shit, like from a butt. If I say it's bad in my Company of Heroes 2 videos, sometimes people get mad at me. But if, if I say it's bad in my Men of War videos, you guys are going to be like, yep. <laughs> that's the difference <laughs> between the fans. Um, but uh, that's also the reason why Company of Heroes 2 has like a Metacritic rating of like 1 from the users, because all the Russian people are mad that it's trying to rush it like a bunch of assholes. I'd be mad too if I were Russian. I'm not. Except met it uh, hereditarily. If you trace my family far enough back, it's pretty much all Russian people. Plus Hungarians and Polish. But mostly Russian. You don't have to go very far back. Just my great grandparents. Ah, uh, Russian. But I do not speak a word of Russian. I speak... I, say, I can say da. That guy's name is Lenz Gross. Ew, gross! You're gross, dude. Clean your lenses. Is it lens? Lens? How do you say Z off Deutsch in German? But this is a hundred... Oh, by the way, I told those people to move like slightly forward in the bush, and they turn it into this whole like fucking turn the gun around, like swivel it backwards, back it up, turn the gun around again. It's like, that could not have been faster than like anything else. I'm sure any other way of maneuvering into position must have been faster, except the AI is doing it, so maybe the AI knows what it's doing. Yeah. Also, I have these stupid trucks now, which came to my... Hey! Hey! Here's something that's unfair. How come the Soviet artillery comes towed by a fucking T-20 with machine gun on the front, like a war tractor, a Russian war tractor, and the Germans, meanwhile, get, like, the fucking truck from Indiana Jones with no gun on the front? You explain to me that. Actually, I don't think that's actually the Indiana Jones truck. That's a half-track truck. This was not in Indiana Jones. But I don't get a machine gun! That's not fair. My opponent used his machine gun, remember, to great effect. They killed, like, one of my men. And I don't get why that was. But these trucks are useless now, so again, they are serving as, uh, magnets for shots. My Folkstorm are doing surprisingly well, I feel like. Walking forward in just complete like barren waste and my opponent just really doesn't have a lot of infantry and so my folks turn when they get shot at they go prone and fire back and they're they're not dead yet uh, now they're dying but I think that's pretty impressive and I was so impressed even that I bought a squad of I can't remember assault squad or normal squad I think it's assault squad I bought a squad of normal infantry and sent them 
in on the left, because I figure if the Folkstorm can make it, anyone can. Unfortunately, there's a lot of fucking artillery going in here right now, and I really should keep this in mind, um, that I have infantry on their way en route to this position, and I should not be running them in when my opponent is bombarding this area with- Fuck me! That's- actually, that's two riflemen dead, that's not very bad. But, um, yeah. Anyways, um, also, most of the sniper just got one of so there's a sniper somewhere there, but look, see, I get these infantry pretty close to my opponent's front line, I'm making a lot better progress than he made back when he was attacking me, that's because he bombarded me for 20 minutes with artillery, and you notice I still haven't fired my artillery, that's because I'm waiting for the AT guns, I want to see the AT guns show themselves, because once the AT guns show themselves, I'll be able to, uh, take them out, and then my... Uh, things will be safe, my vehicles will be safe, but since the AT gun hasn't shown itself yet, I figure maybe maybe they're far back, maybe it doesn't have any. Let's just uh, buy a Panzer II and move in. And simultaneously I also get something to shoot at with uh, my artillery. There's, a, there's a, a mortar which is doing a number on my people along with the snipers. His snipers are being used, put to good use. Good job, dude. Um, my artillery appears to refuse to fire. I'm not sure what I was doing wrong. Uh, there, but then I was sure I was out of range, so that's me being dumb. So they gotta move up. Meanwhile, getting getting shot. People doing shooting. I don't mind. They'll run out of ammo eventually. Um, no, but uh, seriously though, I am pushing forward. Um, I'm getting closer and closer as time goes on. Uh, it's costing me a lot of infantry, but here come my Panzer II and my Panzer III. These should really help out. Um, killing some enemies. At the very least, they'll uh, provide some cover for my infantry. It'll be hard for enemies to shoot up and pop up when uh, I'm getting them. But this mortar is really doing a number on me. I should uh, should maybe have waited for my artillery to move in. But I always feel like like I'm on the clock with this shit. Uh, I want to attack as fast as possible. Trying to maybe get a hit on the mortar with this Panzer III, but it's not happening. He's got a nice mortar pit. That is, by the way, a pretty sweet place for a mortar. As this video goes on, you're going to see precisely how sweet of a place that is for a mortar. I'm getting my Panzer II as close as I feel like I can get it without risking AT grenades destroying it. And um, at this point, it just seems like my opponent doesn't have a lot uh, manning his front line. And uh, I just want to run forward and take it all with infantry, which is what I'm doing right now. I got a bunch of infantry coming forward if you watch the mini-map. And hop, oh, here's the thing. That's an SU-76. Watch out. Everybody back up. Um, which is funny because it's got pretty light armor, so I could any anything I shoot at it at this point I'd pretty much kill it. But um, here's my artillery firing now uh, at the mortar, and it's hitting. It hit an AT mine, combat engineer. There's my Panzer II dead to the uh, SC-76. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Is my artillery killing anything other than that combat engineer? Not yet. I feel like. Hasn't killed the mortar is what I want. Oof, that mortar, and I'm being artillery, this is brutal. But, notice, that time, like, two people got forward to the trench. Then they got immediately killed because I double right clicked instead of right click. But, now these guys are dying, now they're throwing grenades, they're killing themselves with grenades, they're killing themselves on mines. There's mines placed here, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Um, this is getting kind of explodey in retrospect. Maybe this wasn't the best idea. I should have waited for the artillery to stop. Um, but I have a Hetzer now, and I figure it's invincible because if he brings up the SU-76 to for the AT, which isn't going to penetrate a Hetzer, and it's like that's the best he's got. But there's my infantry making progress. They're into the trench, on the right. Uh, just got hit by a grenade. Good job, my pony, using a grenade there. Um, also mines. Maybe those weren't even grenades. Maybe those were just mines the whole time. He's still sniping me. He's still mortaring me. Now here comes this artillery firing down here. Um. Is it hitting anything? Will it hit anything? AT grenade just took out my Panzer III because I wasn't paying the fuck attention. I told it to attack the SU-76, I think. Hetzer does take out the SU-76, so that's good. But uh, its tread might be damaged forever if he just keeps bombarding it with his artillery. Um, but, progress. That one guy's alive. Oh, he's dead. Mine. So this guy laid mines inside the trench. That's nasty. And so I buy bomb disposal people. Oh, fucking... How much artillery does this guy have? Just two, but it seems like everything. Gross. Super gross. That plus mines. My folks turn just exploded on a lot of mines. But I'm capturing a thing. No, I'm not. Wait, still am. That guy's alive. Run, little man. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> well. 
Are we learning lessons? We're learning lessons. Don't run into artillery, and maybe have a better plan to deal with the mines. Um, I'm losing a lot on these mines. I think minesweepers would have been good, like uh, man minesweepers, if you can get them close enough. And it's clear that I can get my infantry close enough um, in this match. It's uh, I'm not having trouble getting infantry close, I'm just having trouble with them exploding when they get close. Um, I'm sure we've all dealt with that, you know, infantry exploding. Uh, one of them just blew up on the mine on the right, but now I'm finally taking this thing on the right. Am I? Am I? Am I gonna get it? Am I gonna get it? Looks like it, except this mortar is gonna just destroy me. Oh, is that? That's a big ass AT gun. I'm like, oh shit. Hetzer, you're repaired. This is amazing. Shoot that thing. Give chase. Tractor is making off with the AT gun. Get get the AT gun. Get that thing. Then it looks like it gets away. Oh, no, fuck you. Hetzer got you. Except. Oh shit, the AT gun's still alive. Swap to swap to HE, swap to hit it with the artillery. Uh, just kidding, Hetzer killed it. So Hetzer killed it, and then the artillery comes in and I nail a flint for our soldiers, so that's good. Now there's still mines, which my folks are, are uh, discovering the hard way. But here are my minesweeper dudes, so notice how easy it is to use them. You have to keep them alive, but once you've got them, it's easy. You just click on them, click on sweep mines, click somewhere else. It doesn't work like for eight times because you can't remember which mouse button to hit. Forget that you did it and just do it again. I think basically you just have to have them equip the minesweeper and then walk them around. They'll find them. Um, that guy was kind of stupid. Got himself killed. How many snipers does this motherfucker have? Two? At least two. He's killing people that fast with Mosin snipers. I feel like you have to have like three or something. Because the Mosin I got, you know, it only bolts every once in a while. When he feels like it. So now all of my mine dudes are dead. You can pick up a minesweeper um, and continue, which I maybe ought to have done, but... Ugh, this is not going well. Oh, by the way, uh, the reason I'm losing so many people is because, like, my objective is just to take this front line thing. Like, I figured, take the front line, it's all going to be golden. Looking back at this, I'm probably too aggressive. Um, I have 14 minutes left, so maybe I could have made this work the way this other guy made it work, or sort of a half and half between him and the way I like to play. I just, I didn't wait very long, I didn't bombard a lot with a lot of artillery. I just went in whole hog. Look at this, backing away like a motherfucker! Oh, I still died, but it almost worked. <laughs> um, and I can repair it at least. So, this mortar, I think it's hard to overestimate how important this mortar's been for him. If I hadn't taken so many losses from this mortar, then my infantry really would have been in position to kill the snipers, probably. If they had been in position to kill the snipers, uh, chances are they would have been able to easily push through and kill people, and had the mortar not been just like constantly wiping out my waves of infantry, I think I really would have been further forward uh, than I was already. And the further forward you are, the harder it is for them to set up stuff that will attack your tanks, the more they have to constantly reposition their artillery as you get closer and closer to it. So, no matter how many times, by the way, I bombard this mortar, nothing's killing it. Um, I have a lot of infantry going, or a lot of artillery going in on it, and not a goddamn thing's happening. Nice uses of tank traps here by my opponent, blocking off this route. Nice use of artillery to make everything explode. Um, everybody's dying with this artillery. Oh my god, artillery! Artillery! It's powerful stuff. Don't mess with it. I don't know what my heads are doing, it's the heads are dance. I'm trying to like slip past the tank traps, that's probably not going to happen. I can just drive over the trench, which I eventually think I will. That depression is so good! That mortar is so good! Oh my god, you guys, put a mortar there in front lines. Do it, just do it. Look how many, look at all those little potholes around it. That's from all my artillery hitting it, and I'm bombarding it again right now, I think, am I? Or was it done reloading? I can't remember. Anyways, that's a good mortar. That mortar's MVP. So, things I could have done better. Waited. I have 12 minutes still, and I need to take the front line. The thing is, now I'm in deep trouble. If I take the front line, I'm going up to 3,000 points. He's at 3,200. Uh, that's, a, that's a really, really not good place for me to be at. Um, again, I'm going to have to make up the points by killing his stuff. And that's really annoying as an attacker, trying to make up the points by killing his stuff. Because killing stuff is hard when you're an attacker. As you're an attacker, you want to be focused on a... Oh, sorry, I'm yawning. I'm tired. I, you want to be focused on taking the territory, not on trying to outfight your opponents. It should be a secondary concern. That mortar is weathering another round of sniper or artillery barrage. Bunch of mines blowing up, killing all my infantry. Bunch of snipers killing all my infantry. This is looking worse 
and no. worse and worse at this point. I'm just like, oh, I gotta take this point. And never, everything's for nothing if I don't take this point. Um, there's zero chance if I don't take the point. But, um, yeah, in retrospect, I think a more moderate assault would have been. Look at the shadows, by the way. Those two little sandbag stacks are casting down that hill. Those are massive shadows. You can't see them anymore. Okay, um, that fucking mortar is still there. Go away, mortar. Nobody likes you. Nobody likes you. You're a bad thing. Then finally he fucks his own stuff up with a, uh, a Katusha sort of thing mounted on a T-60 chassis, um, including his mortar. So finally, <laughs> finally the mortar is decrewed by what my opponent's rocket barrage. I don't know what that was. He, I, he, I, presumably he thought I was making my final push. He thought like, oh shit, here comes the wave of infantry gonna overrun the point and I have to stop him from capping. Just sacrifice everything. Here comes, send in the rockets, send in the rockets. Phew, 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 phew. Um, but I wasn't there. He, he just misjudged. He saw like one of my infantry run forward and extrapolated incorrectly. I just knocked out 234, 85, by the way. Um, but yeah, so don't mortar all your, or don't rocket artillery all your own stuff before having fairly conclusive proof that this is going to kill at least one enemy infantry unit. Uh, oh god, these M30s. I don't even want to talk about it. Artillery is like my Achilles heel. It's more like my Achilles leg. It's like my entire it's my Achilles body. I'm I'm just weak to everything. I'm terrible to artillery. His sniper is really racking up the kills. This guy's name is Engineer Dan. Have I said that already? I don't know. That guy's I clicked on the, by this guy I'm in my opponent, not the person I had selected at the time. I was gonna read the person I selected at the time, his name too, but then I clicked on someone else. He's like Veldemar or something. German people with German names. Good stuff. So, pushing forward my artillery pieces. Um, obviously, the closer you can get them, the better, as long as they're not going to get killed or decrewed or something. Or stolen, God forbid. But, oh fuck, he's recreated the mortar! So now, this is bad. Um, I don't know what killed my Pack 40. Probably a fucking mortar. Um, although, I think it would have said, I guess the Pack 40 went over mines. Um, my tanks are running over mines right now. Not a, not a problem. Um, sometimes you'll lose a tread, typically it'll just explode, and it looks like it's injuring the crew on this thing, but, uh, no biggie. No big deal. See? It's just driving over anti-personnel mines like you don't care. So, at this point is when I start thinking maybe this can happen. Um, I've got some light vehicles here. My opponent doesn't seem to have much in the way of AT. Um, he's wasted another one of his rocket barrages on nothing. Um, he killed one man this time. But that rocket thing has extremely accurate spread. It's just a line, a horizontal line where you aim, even if you're fairly far. So that's really good to know. Buy the Katusha thing, the BM824, whatever. God damn that mortar. Buy that thing um, if you need a. If you really need to fuck up a trench, basically. It's trench shaped. Um, I like that thing. Was it added in the latest patch, which was a while ago, but. Um, when they added some new units, I think it might have been. I don't know, but now I'm gonna try and hit his artillery with my artillery, now that I've moved my artillery up. I'm uh, gonna get some sweet, sweet revenge. I'm gonna have hot keyed my artillery to one and two. Um, I think hot keying things is done, by the way, with shift one and shift two rather than control, like another game. Um, but I wipe out his fucking M30, about time. I get a kill, but then his T-34 wipes out one of my artillery pieces, which I don't think I noticed at the time. So this is just bad, 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 bad. I just, I just seven minutes, take this point, get a bunch of points somehow, I don't know <laughs> how that's gonna happen. But I was like, let's buy a tiger or whatever. Fucking artillery coming in on me, mortar coming in on me, that mortar, that mortar, I tell you what. Also, that was a really nice place to put a, uh, Submachine gun dude. I'm not sure. I thought about throwing a grenade, but then I'm like, no, I'll just go around the corner and shoot him. Nope! He's not going around the corner and shooting him. He's just gonna die. So Udo Schulman. Schulman? Oh, Schumacher. Or, no, Schulman. This is Holger Schumacher. Oh, is this gonna be the end of the mortar? The end of. Nope, just kidding. He's dead. This is painful. I'm sorry you have to watch this. I, I'm rusty. Rusty. I, I don't think I've ever been not rusty in Metabora Assault Squad. I think there's a video on my channel from like two years ago called Rusty as Nails or something. In which I make the same joke, I've never not been rusty. Kinda munition, what does that mean? Kinda means kinda, and munition means munitions. I don't actually know. Uh, that's me fucking up my own tank. Would not recommend that. 
Uh, so I decided let's fuck up one of the opponent's tanks for, for, for a change of pace, just uh, just to see what it's like. This also because my um, Hetzer shot off the tread and then later the everything of the SU-85 on the right so the Tiger didn't have to worry about it. This is nice because then I can tell the Hetzer to shoot in from the side of the T-34, although I was suspecting I wouldn't need it and it turns out I was right, I didn't need it. Tiger just punches straight through that house and destroys it. Ah, oh, the mortar! Still alive. I feel like it should be out of ammo by now. But it's not. Huh. It's killing me. So here come Brandenburgers. Brandenburgers, if you need something done, they'll do it. Here's here's the rockets. Watch the spread again. I guess I'm not going to see the spread because I'm going to fire at it with artillery. With a light chassis like that, chances are you can hit it. If you're fast with the counter barrage and lucky with the uh, spread, you can hit that thing and destroy it. So since it's worth a lot of points, I figure uh, it's worth it. And... Nobody's dead yet, although that mortar just killed two of my men. Mm, looks like he escaped. And my Brandenburgers hit some mines, which is bad. Or to get some machine gunner, which is bad. Um, Brandenburgers get, or assault infantry gets destroyed by a mortar. And now I'm just crawling forward with Lothar Krieg. That's a badass name. Lothar Krieg is going to rid me of this peddlesome mortar, troublesome mortar. Once and for all, he primes his grenade. He throws his grenade. He bounces it right into the boom. And the mortar is no mortar. Ah, it's a pun. Uh, I think the mortar's actually still there. I just knocked it sideways. Maybe it's dead. Stuffed him out. But um, now it's time to use this cover I've created, these craters I've created, to uh, move it on up. So I'm in, if, if this is not obvious, I'm in deep trouble. I have four and a half minutes to capture this thing. Once I capture the thing, I'm still going to be 2,000. I'm going like, to be like 400, 500 points behind. And it's going to be really tough for me to make that up. Um, I'm feeling the time pressure now, and so I'm trying to drive forward with everything. But the tiger's broken. I lost a tread driving over something, maybe a mine. Um, or maybe being shot, so... Ugh. Talk to me in the comments about what you think about this artillery-heavy playstyle that my opponent likes to rely on on attack. Maybe we should adopt this in the future, try something like this, be more cautious in our assaults. Um, maybe don't throw so much away until you first soften the opponent up. But I don't know. It's not as exciting. Uh, talk about how awesome that mortar position is, like holy shit. Talk about that mortar, man. What a mortar. Um, Talk about snipers, maybe? My opponent seems to be using snipers really well. I'm not sure I ever figured out where those snipers were hiding. Probably just in a trench somewhere, because that's all you need. Um, they'll be picking away. Uh, there's that Katusha thing blowing up, and snipers killing people, and everything's being destroyed. At this point, I'm just in full-on suicide rush mode. Um, I wanted to try to save some face, at least. Like, I don't know, capture this frontline thing. Maybe it'll be a miracle. I don't know whatever, just do it, send on the infantry forward. I am actually making progress, you know, as I'm getting closer and closer with all my stuff, but, um... Oh, the Tiger's repaired. So let's send that guy up. Oh, and this Hetzer I repaired long ago is here. Let's send that guy up. But, yes, this shows the weakness of playing like an idiot like me, and it shows the benefits of, uh... It seems like more textbook-style defense play from my opponent, um, than his assault play, which was very artillery-heavy until the end. Um... You know, he's got infantry spread out. He seemed to be a little light on the infantry in the front front lines. Um, I tend to put more there. But uh, it looks like it's paid off for him, spreading out all his people this much. Um, if if I had been le more cautious, I'm not sure it would have paid off for him as much. Um, I wasted a lot of infantry running into like mines and getting exploded by mortars and stuff. Had I dealt with those threats effectively, I think I would have steamrolled his um, minimal infantry contingent more easily and then made more progress when it came time for the more heavier assaulting. But um, again, it's tough, really, to know what would have happened. It's, it's hard to predict the future, even with 2020 hindsight. <laughs> so, um, in conclusion, this is a nice match. I enjoyed it. Um, I got my butt kicked, but um, I think I learned... I don't know, it's tough to say what I learned. I learned, don't be so aggressive, even though you always want to be aggressive. Maybe hold back a little bit, try and clear those mines first, try and, um... I, really, I think my main mistake, I should have recognized the mortar, 
was there, and also I did some really boneheaded stuff walking into artillery. Had I not walked into artillery that much, and had I realized that mortar was going to be so crucial, um, I think I could have done better. So, uh, and this shouldn't be surprising to me, because I love mortars. Mortars are like my favorite thing in the world, but um, I should have realized how crucial the mortar would be. Wipe out the mortar. And I should not have lost so much stuff to artillery uh, when I was attacking. Because just running into those M20 barrages did me zero favors at all. So, there's there's your takeaway from this match. Uh, the mortar is king, queen, and crown prince of the battlefield. What is a crown prince, by the way? Maybe you play Crusader Kings 2, you know what a crown prince is? Does Crusader Kings 2 have any crown princes? I don't know anything about Crusader Kings 2. I know a tiny bit about it. I know that it's very confusing for a person like me who doesn't know the intricacies of feudalism. So, I'm trying to capture the thing. I have 20 seconds left. Do you think I'll make it? 64, 63, 62, 50. Going down to 50. Going down to 40. I have 14 seconds. 13. Doesn't look like it's going to make it because once it goes down to zero, I then have to get it up to 100. Uh, my opponent Blitzkrieg's in. I uh, guess himself. Uh, murdered. Almost. Now it's murder. Yeah, look at that. Even my car carbines. So, uh, that's the end. Bye.